Choosing an international school for your child is a very difficult decision. And if you move to a new country, it's something that you need to be thinking about well in advance before you make the move. Now, if you're moving with a company, the chances are that your company will put you in touch with a liaison officer who will help you to make that decision. And your choice may depend upon where you're coming from and where you're going to. So, for example, if you're taking a contract for a few years and you're British, you'll probably look to a British school. And similarly, if you're American, you'll probably wish to look to the American school of. In this video, Paris, because of this exploration. It makes sense to get the continuity because you're going to return home to your country and thus the curriculum model won't change extensively from one place to another. There may be other factors to consider there. You may wish for a bilingual option and thus in the case of Paris there are several other options and many bilingual schools which offer curriculum models in both English and French. And another factor may be you're seeking a school with religious identity and if so there are one or two in the marketplace. And there's also one I'll throw into the mix for the primary sector, which is a forest school, which is something completely different again. And if you want your children to have that opportunity for outdoor play and being at one with nature, it could be the best option for you if your children are very young. So we'll start with the British School of Paris. Okay, so it was established in 1954 and it was built to serve the expat community in Paris coming from the United Kingdom. It's in the town of croissy sur seine Now that's an hour out of Paris so you've got to consider that as a factor if selecting the British School of Paris. The RER railway system does go to Croissy but it's quite a journey, particularly for a younger child. So if you're going to consider the British School of Paris and you're working in the city, you might be better living in the suburbs on the west side of Paris where you'd have easier access to the British School. It's got a beautiful location on the banks of the River Seine and it's a fairly new build, so the facilities are very impressive. It follows the English national curriculum and encourages progressive methodologies, particularly in the primary school, where children are encouraged to learn through play and experiential learning. In the high school, they offer IGCSE and A-level programs, as you might expect, and most of their students will go on to university in the United Kingdom. Their current head teacher is Nicholas Hammond. I don't know much about him. I actually worked in Paris a handful of years ago, but things have changed considerably. Now, you'd never judge a school by its website, but this is a very tidy, nice, responsive website, and there is a lot of information about the school if you were to go through it to do with who they are, their mission and vision, the various sections, the admissions process, and everything you may expect from an international school website. So it's a good school. It's probably quite costly, but I think you're going to find Paris is quite costly. I don't think really there are any cheap options unless you consider the local system as opposed to the international sector, which is a viable alternative. Now, for Americans, 
there is the American School of Paris, which again has an interest in location. It's located in Saint Cloud, which isn't actually in Paris either. It's in the suburbs. It's located up on a hill, and there are some wonderful views from Saint Cloud over the whole of the city of Paris. Now that's not a reason to choose the school, but it's an extra bonus. It really is beautiful up where the American School of Paris is. So essentially it's a little piece of the United States in Paris. The American School of Paris is partly funded by the State Department and it is the one school in the city which is officially linked to the US government. The US State Department will only ever fund one school officially in any one city and that's why there are so many American schools off. They tend to be funded by the State Department. They offer a K through 12 curriculum, including both IB and advanced placement in the upper school. It's a big campus, so the 10 hectares or 40,000 square meters in the southwestern suburbs, as I say, in saint Cloud. You benefit from the economies of scale of the fact that it's a big school with a very modern feel maybe a little impersonal because of its scale but there's strengths and weaknesses to big schools it's not really well served by the public transport system and it probably would involve taking a bus from saint cloud if you were living in the city and commuting out so maybe if you're going to send your child to this school it might be worth living in the southwest suburbs so your child doesn't have to commute far or be dropped off from a distance if they're in primary. So again, obviously, most of the students will go to university in the United States and amongst American parents and children, it's the most popular option. The other school which is kind of classic international school in Paris is the International School of Paris. So you can see it's been open since 1964. 15 minute walk from the Eiffel Tower. So it is really central. This is the advantage that ISP has over the British School, the American School. It has a wonderful location. Now the downside of its location is that it's in cramped building accommodation which is just in amongst other office buildings and residential buildings in downtown Paris. So strengths and weaknesses, it's in the 16th, so it's a great location, but it's, it's not got the same level style of classrooms as ASP or BSP. It's unique because it offers all three parts of the IB diploma. It offers PYP, MYP, and then the diploma. The disadvantage is the cramped accommodation and lack of access for play or physical education. They do make a plan. They take the children to nearby playing fields, but it's not the same. When you look at the, the facilities at the American or British schools, but it does have a genuinely international community and it does have children from over 60 different countries, 35 mother tongues spoken and a number of their students who are genuinely multilingual. So if you want that genuine international feel of an international school, this is an international school. As I say, the British school is a British school in Paris. The American school is an American school in Paris. If you want the international flavor for your child, ISP is a good option. Marymount Paris, Marymount International School Paris, is a Catholic school located in New Sur Seine, which is one of the most well-to-do leafy suburbs to Paris. It's on the fringe of the city. You can actually see the Arc de Triomphe from just down the road from the school. So it's very, very close to the city. 
but you don't feel as if you're in the middle of the city. It has that kind of out of town feel. So it's a Catholic school and its sense of vision and objectives are somewhat different to the other schools in Paris for that reason. It is owned or governed by the religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary, who increasingly have handed over their leadership to the laity, the non-religious people, but they do still play a big role in the school. Also, unlike its major competitors that I've talked about, it's part of a foundation of schools or a network of schools, including schools in Rome, in London, in Portugal, in the United States, Colombia, and in other cities and other countries as well. So, and the students do get the opportunity to interact with the students in the other campuses. That's one of the great advantages of the school. The curriculum model is an American standards-based curriculum in line with US models, so Common Core, NGSS, etc. The community is about 350 students, last time I checked. It has a disadvantage of not having a high school. It is pre-K through to middle school. But at the same time, the benefit of that is they specialize on early primary and middle school education without the distraction of having the exam classes and really no compulsion to be an exam factory. I'm recognizing that their students are likely to move on to the British school, the American school, ISP, or one of the bilingual schools in the city. They do tend to have a broader program than just the kind of narrow American standards base. So that's the core of it, but there are other learning opportunities. They also have a fabulous fab lab or fabrication laboratory. So the students will transition into one of the other schools after completing their time at Marymount or often return to their country of origin. It's certainly worth considering. Um, it is the only English medium Catholic school that I'm aware of and certainly of its size and scope. And it has a reputation, certainly, of, as being one of the big four, along with the British School, the American School, and ISP. There are other options, though. Kingswood, I have to say, I'm not as familiar with, because when I was in Paris, they were just starting out. But they do seem to have established themselves, and they do seem to be now taking a fair slice of the market so they offer a virtual tour if you're interested in their school here are some of the pictures obviously just stock pictures the map is interesting you can see like isp they are fundamentally in the city so if you want to go there you can see here's the second i can never say it draws them up properly but near opera so it's very, very central, even more so than ISP. I believe it's establishing itself as a credible alternative to the other players in the market, and it may be a little bit cheaper. It's worth checking out. They certainly have made their mark because I left Paris in 2013 and they were only just opening. Now, one bugbear... Somewhere they refer to accreditation. Now, to my mind, from my position as someone working in education, this is a huge faux pas. Under accreditation, they make references to being accredited by exam boards. No school is accredited by an exam board. You can be registered with an exam board, and the exam board will make sure that you will follow their standards and they'll do certain checks you don't get accredited. It's not like being a member of, or an accredited member of the Council of International Schools or the Council of British International Schools. It's, it's a different thing completely. Any school can make this claim. So please do not take any notice of their claim for accreditation. 
These guys have rebranded. They're now part of the IS, ICS network, which as you can see, has other schools in Milan, in London, in Nice, and is part of a global group. eye-catching website you can see it's generally genuinely international with English and bilingual instruction predominantly focusing on English language now for some people it will be better known under its former name which could be in this section Okay, it doesn't actually say, it says somewhere. If you're interested, it does say. It's in the city, it's on the fringe of the city, so you're not far from the suburbs in the 15th. I visited it under its previous guise, and it, it's a very nice school. Um, it's got a little bit more room, perhaps bigger classrooms than ISP, or probably Kingswood, which I haven't visited, but looking at where it is. It, it's, it's a nice school. Um, and for bilingual education, it's definitely got to be a serious option because the British School, the International School, Marymount and ISP and the American School, they're all English medium and they'll teach French and they'll have more French than you'd find in a, an average school in the UK or America, but maybe only 10% where the bilingual schools will have a far greater focus on the French language. Similarly, you have the Lycée International, which essentially it's a French school with a big French section, but they have different sections to their school through their international education partnerships. Now, I think they've got 14 different sections with their international links. So the core of the school is a French school but from the kind of French center, you then have these outreach programs into other curriculum models. Sorry, I've gone back. And there's the section I wanted. 14 different sections. So you can see German, American, British, Chinese, Danish, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, Dutch, Norwegian, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, and Swedish sections. Now, of those sections, the students will all learn in the same environment, but there'll be specialist teachers to ensure that the national curriculum requirements of the section are met and that the language enhancement, say within German, Spanish or Chinese, is continued whilst you still follow your French high school program as a hybrid. So it's, it's a nice model. If you're ever considering it, do bear in mind um, it's considerably out of town. Saint Germain en Laye is quite a trek out of Paris. It's, uh, it's not really Paris, it's certainly deep into the suburbs. But again, Saint Germain is on the RER and it's eminently commutable for older students or for people living in Saint Germain en Laye to send their students to the Lycée International and commute into Paris. Another one we'll have a quick look at because it's got the Anglo, the Franco-French angle is the Lenin Bilingual School. Um, I don't know so much about this one, but as you can see, bilingualism and multiculturalism are parts of the raison d'etre. So it could be worth checking out. It's just the primary school, there's no high school section after kindergarten and primary. These guys weren't in the marketplace when I worked in Paris, Open Sky, but they've grown quickly. They have a reputation of being an exam factory. So if you want the holistic, child-centered education, focus on social and emotional learning, they're not going to be your choice. If securing the best possible exam results and having your child perhaps lectured to and a knowledge rich curriculum which suits some people this could be the option to take 
Uh, many of their parents are happy according to the testimonials, which of course they would be, and Open Sky is looking to expand its operation within Paris and beyond and has ambitions to become a multi-country option. So maybe you benefit in the long term, but only really if you're sending your children to the pre or primary school and they stay with the program. Like I said, it'd be unfair to say much more than that, um, but I believe that they've made an impact in the market. A lovely little school, which goes up to middle school, is out of town in Malherb. It's a beautiful little school. Um, if you are living in the suburbs, it's got to be worth considering. It's a small, friendly school. It's opposite a big park, which is an overflow for play, really kind of child-centered, really kind of um, looking to be holistic in what they provide, trying to be the best of a combination of English and French schools. There are plenty of schools like this within the wider Greater Paris area, but I deliberately picked this one out because I visited the school during my time in Paris and I just felt it was a lovely environment and somewhere where I would consider sending my own children, which is always testimony to a school. And another school I loved when I visited was Forest International School in Paris. Now, it's bilingual, it's private. Again, it's in the western suburbs, but it's absolutely beautiful. It is in the forest. This is their own grounds. This isn't students going out. The forest is there, so whether or not they own it or whether it overlaps and overflows into the forest doesn't really matter because this is how the children learn. So learning through play, small classes, um, focusing on the environment, focusing on sustainable development, helping children to become eco-literate, developing their self-confidence, their abilities in both French and English with a multitude of different nationalities, 20 plus. It's a small school, so you get that personal touch. If I recall, it's family run as well. So you really have that caring environment where the people actually who founded the school are very much involved in it. And I found them to be quite visionary in terms of what they want to achieve at the school. So if you love progressive education, and you really want your child to have a different school experience within the context of Paris, then Forest could well be the place for you. There are other choices in Paris. I have no mean, by, by no means covered everything. It could be that uh, you want to go full immersion, and by the, you could send your son or daughter to a collage or lycée, and just throw them into the regular French sector, which would be a cheaper option than the private international sector. But it could be quite tricky for your child unless they have a considerable amount of French language already. So if your child has limited French or none at all, it's very worth considering the international sector. And no doubt if you are being reassigned by a company, you'll be getting at least part of the fees, if not all of the fees paid. So that will help in terms of paying what can be tremendously high fees in the international sector. I don't know what they're charging now because it's a while since I worked in Paris. And for full declaration, it was Marymount where I worked. I absolutely love working there. I'd fundamentally recommend it not just to people who are Catholics or American, but anyone considering a beautiful school in a lovely part of the Parisian suburbs with a real child center program. I wholeheartedly recommend Marymount, but I've been very balanced, I think, in my presentation of the other schools in the market. But you know, it's good to be transparent and a full declaration. So finally, if this has been useful to you, Please like the video and also subscribe to the channel so you get notifications of any similar videos. And please use the comment box. Do you agree with what I've said about the schools? 
has anything changed because my knowledge of Paris is now a little bit dated. If you want to update anything I've said, then please use the comment box. If you have questions for me or for anyone else who may view the video, use the comment box. I really hope that you will engage.